Previously on Car Trek, Auto Tempest challenged each of us to find the coolest cheap exotic we could find for the price of a C8 Corvette. We chose a Ferrari 360 Spider, a Lamborghini Gallardo, and an Aston Martin V12 Vantage S. I'm 90% sure that you cheated. I am 100% sure that you have cheated. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Does it have a clean title? No. <laughs> <laughs> they also said that we'd be competing in a series of tests and the man with the most passes will get to keep his car, and the others will have to list them for sale. You'll take your cars to a professional exotic car mechanic to do the pre-purchase inspection you should have done on your car before you bought them. Tyler, Tyler, pull in behind me. I, don't, I, I got nothing, the car's dead. Oh, that happens. Oh, whoa! None of this looks cheap. Uh-oh, oh. what do we got here? Um, holy cow. That's actively dripping. $13,000? Your next challenge is to save some money and fix an item on the repair bill you just got on your own. You have until midnight. I am an awful mechanic, but Not I can turn wrenches. Not as bad as me. No, <laughs> you, you don't turn wrenches. I don't, I don't know which side of them you do turn. So this is gonna be fun. Let's go to my shop. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately after we got the text from Auto Tempest challenging us to fix our cars by midnight, we hit the road. Hard. Hey Tyler, how does my exhaust sound? Yes, that V12 sounded pretty good, but nothing beats an angry Ferrari V8. We arrived at Tavares' secret workshop, where he was way too excited to get his hands dirty for some reason. He instructed us all to back our cars on a lift, which usually wouldn't have been a problem, unless of course you're driving a flappy paddle Ferrari. Dude, what was that? Smell the clutch. <laughs> well, the automated manual transmission, the F1, it's confusing. It's a little knob for reverse, and sometimes it just doesn't want to go in reverse. You know, if I don't How get it right. How confusing could it be? One it, says R, the other one doesn't. Well, it's kind of a weird T thing. I mean, it can happen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the reason why we're here is because Auto Tempest told us to fix something on our long, long repair list, and uh, I am really <laughs> excited. <laughs> I'm because this, this is my element. I'm ready to get dirty. Are you guys ready to get dirty? I have people for that. Yeah. Okay, well. You uh, see these hands? They're not, they're not working hands. <laughs> no, they're delicate. There are two problems with this car that I would love to address this evening. The first is that it absolutely refuses to accept fuel when I ask it to. The other is that as I drive, the residue and sediment from the flood that has paralyzed this car previously absolutely buries my luggage that's in the front compartment. And so I would love to find out what vent is stopping the fuel from being able to freely flow into its gas tanks. And I would also love to, I suppose, remove whatever this trough is that holds my luggage and clean whatever dirt is underneath that. So I'm going to set out to the removal of whatever these torque screws and I don't know, bolts are, and get this plastic tub that houses the top out, and uh, then I'll set off to that. But uh, Freddie, what are you doing this evening? I'm gonna completely transform this car. It's gonna be awesome. So, are you gonna do the clutch? No. It needs a clutch? You're yeah, Mr. I'm, wrench every day. I know, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that, no. All right, how about the power steering pump? That's probably a little more manageable, right? No. So what are you doing? Dude, don't worry about it. 
You'll see later. Just worry about whatever you're doing. All right. So for my wrenching segment, I'm going to start with a deep hipping as much as I can with this car. I'm going to continue by replacing my intake boots with this brand new one here. Inside, very easy to access. We'll start by getting this, oh, Jesus. Um, we'll start by getting this off where the air filter lives. To get to here, to get to there, to there, yes. Hot, hot. Yes. Uh, Freddy. What? I'm gonna need a little help on this one. Uh, these, this is a weird clamp. All right, so this clamp, uh, it's a one-time use. Uh-huh. And what you have to do is you have to take this and you just squish it down. But you have to be very careful because whatever you put on it, well, you can never really take it off. So put this around right here. Yeah. That didn't hit the floor. I don't know where it went. Okay. Just, yeah, just hold this up like holding that. Holding it up, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that. Okay, like that. And yeah, I'm gonna get it like this. And now, it should be good. Okay. All right. Um, is, uh, is that one the bad one? Because um, you're right. Yes. Yes. He said this one was the bad one. So I just, I just <laughs> did the wrong one. Did you really do that? I, I did. Did you really just replace the wrong I one? I did. Um, I don't want to so, do the other one. So, so that wouldn't be a bad problem, except for the fact that you don't have any more of these clamps in their one-time use. So you you can't do that. I just really screwed up. Okay. Uh, I I got an idea. I got okay. an idea. Duct tape. Tape. Yes. <laughs> okay. We can take that up. And we'll be okay. Wonderful. We'll be all right. You want right. to do that? Yeah, I, I can handle that. I'll put the rest of this back together and start unpimping. But all right. I think, I think Ed really, really needs your help. I think. Oh, oh yeah. I, th I think he's lost. In fact, I was far from lost. I was making great progress, removing anything in my way, sure to find something marked part that stops gasoline from getting in. All right. So they're gonna get to the point where I have that thing off. Eventually, though, I delegated a few of the final steps. Well, it looks like you gentlemen have that under control. So the other issue that I would love to address is the fact that there is a lot of mud inside this car and it uh, was sediment or whatever. Fortunately, it was a freshwater flood, but it was some muddy water. And so as I drive, it appears to shake up or through this absolutely uninstalled shield to cover my luggage with mud and dirt. And so what I would love to see happen is to see this not get so dirty. So my assumption is that there is so much dirt underneath this thing that it's just vibrating or blowing up somehow and getting all over everything. So uh, my next goal is to stop that from happening. Okay, so that is not immediately obvious how that might come out. Freddy, Freddy. What? Um, how would I get to all the dirt and mud that is probably inside my front bumper cover? Uh, push this car into traffic. I don't want the Hoovy solution. I want the real solution. <laughs> okay, it's, it's really, really easy. Uh, you got bolts here, mm -hmm. here, here, here. Remove this six CD changer because uh, who uses CDs anymore? My Celine uh, Dion requires it. Okay, so you take this off, take out this electrical connector, and then this entire thing comes out pretty precariously. There's some wires that could get damaged. And uh, then you can clean whatever it is you have to clean. That seems like a lot. It's not, it's not, it's not a little. I, I've got a better idea. You finish this, I'm on it. You sure? Yep. Okay.
Flood Gallardo owners of the world will soon embrace the Ed Shield. Of course, the uh, go to market version will probably be a little bit better fitting, but I believe I have solved my problem. And so now I am off to check on Good Tyler's progress. Done. Holy cow, Tyler, look at that. Yes. What a transformation. This is exactly what I think about when I think about it. The 360 Spider I fell in love with as a 16 year old. Thank you. It has officially been <laughs> unpimped. Look, look down the side of it. Oh my God. It, you know, I don't even mind the wheels now with the proper rocker panels, everything else. You have outdone yourself as a mechanic, sir. Thank you. Now, what about these LED lights? Well, I don't know how they work at all. I don't think they work. I'd hope not. That would upset what you've done here a good bit. How but are things going over there? I don't have the slightest clue. I just I left Freddie to it. <laughs> Hopefully uh, he's got it a little bit closer to accepting gasoline when it's uh, asked to, but uh, I suppose I'll go check. All right, I need you to put your lips on and blow. What? Um... So we need him to put his lips on your uh, fill nozzle hole. Okay. And blow tightly to simulate being uh, filled with gasoline. Yeah, it's really easy. Just, just look, look at this. What in the world? So, <coughs> it's real smooth. So, <coughs> it's good. Yeah. So, so as that happens, there's a little valve here that should be releasing that pressure. Mm -hmm. And as you could hear, your gas tank's groaning and Freddie groaning. That, yeah. It, it's not releasing the pressure. Right. We're gonna go ahead and pull the valve out and see how much mud is stuck in there and preventing it from opening. Yeah, and that I'm, sounds like a great plan. You don't die. You finish that. I'll I'm gonna lie. What year is it? After many hours of discussing holes and what to do with them, I had successfully removed the hose with only a small amount of help from Freddie and the exceptionally well dressed Jared. We then discovered some more dead weight that I'd been carrying along on this journey. How's right. it going, Freddie? Um, well, I can. Tell you that I'm a little better than you are. <laughs> so, uh, blow on that. Oh, what? Blow on it. I don't want to do blow that. Blow on it. Oh, okay. Just, just do Here. it. You see that? That is a gas tank that is totally usable. Really? Yeah. Like I could, I could put as much gasoline in it. This as I is want. a game changer. This will change your life, dude. That is life changing. Yeah. So all you have to do is uh, put everything back, just like the plastic tray, and, and just button this up, and boom, your car is good to go. Repaired. Yes. Wrench every night. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hey, did did you see those LED lights in Tyler's engine bay? Maybe. How do we make them work? Well, probably you need a remote. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's the remote. Yes, like a previous a person bought that for that car. Yes. Okay. Well, you fixed my thing and you helped Tyler with his thing, and mm -hmm. now I suppose you can go and work on your own car. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess I could. All yeah. right. Well, I'm sure you've got a lot of work cut out for you. Yeah, yeah, maybe. So now that those other two are left to their own devices, I'm going to do something that I wanted to do ever since I got this car, and it's really, really simple. It's a big transformation by doing something extremely simple. Now, back here is a fuse box, and in it is a little fuse, and all I have to do is pull it, it's fuse 15, and it's a little five amp fuse, and you pull it, and immediately the car is better. Hey, so let me get this straight. Your right. wrenching session, mm -hmm. Mr. Wrench every day, yeah. is pulling a fuse. Right, so the reason why is because I have an exhaust leak. That was on my list of things, and the fuse is for the exhaust, and it makes the exhaust more free-flowing. So, if my exhaust is more free-flowing, then that means my exhaust leak is lessened. Boom, I have solved the problem. Wait till you hear this. You ready? Sure. Do your worst. Woo! Does it sound the same to you? It does sound so good. That does not sound the same. Sounds good? Oh, okay. That doesn't sound the same at all, guys. Wow. Gracious. Whoa. Okay. That's fixed. No, it's not fixed. It's masked. So, Freddie. Yeah. You really haven't fixed 
anything at all. What are you talking about? Not, not a single thing. What are you talking there about? No that wrenching. part sounds awesome. It sounds amazing. It, absolutely. You pulled a fuse. Ed, right. you put a piece of cardboard and tape all over the front of your car and then let Freddie work on the rest of it. You didn't fix a single thing. Conceded, but highly effective. I fixed something. Absolutely. But if, not the right something. No, no, not at all. Yes, I, it was the wrong side, but I, I fixed something. Also, look at this car. It is a complete transformation. I have completely unpimped it. Completely. Oh, really? Yes, really. Look oh. at this. You got it working. Oh, yeah. My disco lights. Yeah. <laughs> this is the remote. 2005 <laughs> has arrived, my friend, in oh, all of its glory. Man. Oh, it's it's even in the floors, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the whole package. Wow. Somebody <laughs> went all out. This, this is... Expertly, expertly done. What are you gonna do with all of this? I have no idea, but all the work I just did to unpimp, I have now been repimped. Completely um, repimped. Guys, I just got a text from Auto Tempest. It's a pretty long one. Okay, so it says, Congratulations on completing in several hours what a competent mechanic would get done in a few minutes. The only thing you've proved is that unless you like hanging out in dirty shops in the middle of the night, Buying exotic sports cars out of warranty with no way to pay for expensive repairs probably isn't a good idea. To put your bubblegum fixes to the test, you must take your cars on a road trip from here to one of the most prestigious car events in the world, the Amelia Island Concours d'Elegance. Ooh, that's not too far that away. That sounds wonderful, yeah. Because Amelia Island isn't very far from where we are now, tomorrow morning you will drive 200 miles in the wrong direction. And to show how practical your cars can be, you'll do the entire drive on one tank of fuel. Okay. Well, at least I can now insert one tank of fuel. And I have to hypermile a Ferrari. And one last thing, no highways. Oh. Yeah. How's, how are we gonna do that? I don't, I don't know. Can we go to bed? <laughs> yes. Let's go to bed, yeah. All right, night night. <laughs>